afternoon, everybody. Glad to see you here. It is very good. Enough for that. Basically, what I've been working on of late is a bunch of taking a bunch of my original basic programs and putting them into one package. So when I put them in one, <laughs> so hopefully what I'm trying to do is create a boot screen to run all these particular programs here. And you can just select what you want. Thank you very much. Hello. How about if I turn it on? Yes, there it is. Hmm. I don't know. How do you do that? Oh, you, you just pointed to no, never mind. Just keep on going, later. Keep going. Later. All right, sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties that will be repaired momentarily. All right, basically, what I've got here, I work in basic because it's just simple. It's, and I'm a simple guy. I'm the redneck. Of all you guys here, I am the redneck. And I just mess around, like here's Check It Out, I don't know if anybody's ever used Check It Out, came from Run, 1992, they gave me $150, I bought some groceries, big deal. Checkmate, it turns around and works with Check It Out. And it's, it's a, if you have a steady um, payment, like your house payment, that comes up every month and it's always the same price, you can turn around and use Checkmate, save the data for the Check It Out, call it up, and print your check and you're done. Just sign your check, send it on. I have, a, now a lot of people I know have pretty much gone to the internet to pay your bills on the internet, that's fine. But I personally have one or two bills that requires check, cashier's check, money order, will not take a debit card, will not take a credit card. So I still use this program once in a while. T42. T stands for the envelope addresser. Now, how am I supposed to send the check written by Check It Out using Checkmate if I don't have an envelope to put it in? So, we turn around and just this prints on an envelope or a window style envelope. It'll print a sheet of paper with all the information. You fold it up, put it in the envelope, put your check in there with your bill, put it in there, put a stamp on it, get it out of here. It's just like. How basic is this? We're talking basic. Very good. So, and yeah, I know. I've been, I've been doing comedy for years and it just doesn't leave. This, number four, is the one I'm working on, the ledger, and we're going to go ahead and talk to it right now. This is the one I'm working on. Still got a lot of uh, things there. Presented by the Fresno Commodore Users Group. I've turned around and given you guys a little credit, and you're probably going, oh, please get that off the program. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, yes, get it off, or thanks, it's been posted. Thanks for <laughs> crediting us. Ding. All right. So this is going on. This is a 54-block program. Now, just basically, you can create a ledger entry, read one, make a payment on the accounts, update the state data statements. This, I mean, like I said, this is really a work in progress. What would be nice, if I could figure it out, is to sit down one time with my cat in my lap and try to figure out how to make it automatically update all your information to the present day, to the present time. Um, erase an account, my favorite part of the program. I'd love to sit around and see a bill go, bye-bye. So I could turn around and use erase an account. And of course, you can print an entry onto your printer. Um, it's still just your basic nine pin printer. Nothing too fancy dancy. Okay. And this is what I've added recently, manipulate permanent information. Once in a while, a wonderful company will say, your bill no longer goes to San Francisco, it goes to St. Louis. So you have to change all that information. Rather than going back into the program and you know, erasing it and retyping it, you can just go to burn, manipulate permanent information, change it, resave it, you're done. And of course we've got quit. Well, let's see, let's read one. Let's see what I've got here to read. And also type end to go to get any input and type list. And let's turn around and see. Let's just read one. Let's see if I've got anything on this disk. This could be the demo. This little program, this little reader here was written by the very wonderful Jim Butterfield, and I just turned around and borrowed it and manipulated it. All this stuff here, 
Yep, there's nothing on this disk, so we get to turn around and create our own account. So we'll create a ledger entry. Oh, let's see, who do we want to owe money to? Who wants me to owe them money? Uh. <laughs> Hunter, he volunteered. Hunter wants me to give him money. So we're going to call it Hunter Tiberius Zool. Zool? Zool. Okay. What do we want for an account number? Hosehead? <laughs> Hosehead, Hosehead. His uh, account name is Hosehead. So anytime I turn around and write him a check or anything, do you have a website? No, I do not yet. Okay, we type none. Do you have an address? Do you live somewhere or do you live in a trash can like Oscar the Grouch? <laughs> What, what, where do you live? Uh, 9835. 9835. East. East? Yeah. East. 37th. 37th, and that's, that, that'll end that address there. And then the city I know is Tulsa. Yeah. And this is all, and it's Oklahoma. You can spell Oklahoma out or use the, the you know, we're just okay. Oklahoma is okay. Sure it is. Yeah, all right. What? Uh, seven. Seven four. One one six. One four six. Do you want me to put your phone number so all the girls can call you? No, he has no phone number. Sorry, ladies. And how much do you want me to owe you? A million dollars? A dollar. Okay, I owe Hunter one dollar. And the minimum payment due. How much will you accept for me and to not turn me into collections? Ten cents. Again. Ten cents. He will not turn me into collections if I pay him ten cents. When? When do you want it? Now? I guess now. Well, you ain't gonna get it, buddy. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're in Vegas, dude. <laughs> Seriously. All right. We owe Hunter. He wants his money tomorrow, so that is the nineteenth. Oh seven. One, nine. You guys see, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of guys sitting in here going, oh, I know a better way to do that. And I said, well, I'd love to come over here and talk to me. I'd love to have some ideas. And the method of payment, how do you want it? You want cash, cashier's check, credit card? Cash. cash. Fine. <coughs> You'll pay him cash. Now, we save the data as whatever I decide now. Zoo. And there it goes. Saving right there. Looking at that real good. We're back to the main screen. So we want to read this payment. Enter the name. We already decided it was Zool. Goes to drive again. And there's all his information right there in a nice little one block sequential file. Itty bitty thing. And all right. You know what? I think I got a quarter. So I'm going to pay you now. We're going to pay Hunter right now, so I don't owe him any money. Oh. Now you know why I don't play for the Kansas City Royals. Uh. <laughs> All right, so we just made a payment to Hunter. Let us take a look. Make a payment on account. And we're still dealing with Zoo. It comes up here. I currently owe him $1. Would you like to pay a, pen, a, a penny? That's supposed to be 10. That's one of the quirks. I can't figure out how to do that. Would you like to pay one-tenth of one dollar? And the answer is no. Well, I paid him 25. Now I owe him 75 cents. Do I want to archive this? Now here's another thing. If you want to turn around and have a, a, a disk trail, you can change the file name and just turn around and create a disk trail. I personally just want to know what I owe somebody when right now. So I'll turn around and tell it, we're going to put this in archive. And do I want to save it as Zool? I do indeed. And there it goes again. It's changing all this data. All of that. All right. Now we're going to turn around and I'm just going to erase Hunter's account because I'm, he has to ride with me. I'm going to, I'll give him 75 cents later. Erase the file you want to get rid of. We're going to erase Zool. Last chance. Are you sure you want to destroy? Favorite word. 
The information contained in Zool, this data may not be recoverable. So I'm going to destroy it. File name is gone. Any more to erase? No. And so when you turn around and go to any one of these open files, where's Zool, it'll give me a file not found. Oops, wrong one. All right, I turned around and went to the wrong one. Okay, well, let's run right through that. Save data as nothing, saving data as Zool. We're still, we'll, get to, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. We'll just turn around and erase that one again. Zool, yes, yes. And we'll make double sure it's gone. Zool, yes. Any more files to erase? And we will go to read into the name of Zool. The computer has encountered a file not found error, and you can check your disk directory right here and right now. And we will do that, and Zool should be gone. Looking good. It's, it's a slow read because I'm a slow reader. I like that. And it's on a main boot screen and everything. It just picks it right up. So everything's good there. We want to go back to quit. We're out. We're out. It looks pretty good. Now, let me just turn around and step off because I think I've got maybe about ten, five minutes left. Who does not have a copy of my book? You ain't getting one. No. You buy yours off the internet. <laughs> No, no. I honestly had plans to bring six copies. Guess what? The publisher decided at two days speed delivery, they delivered it in four. So somewhere two equals four, and I don't understand why. This is a what the book. This is not a how-to book. It is not a history of book about Commodore. It is a what the. Like, what do you mean by this? when you turn around and talk about your house. You know, my house is in here, and because that's where my Commodore sits, is in my house. <laughs> yeah, I've got it in the backyard, covered by the chicken coop. Yeah. The house so, yeah, the house too. The house. Yeah. It turns around and keeps the, the mosquitoes out. But this is, a, this, this is a fun book to write, to, to write. I had fun writing it. It has intros to every story, and it's, it was just fat up last, and believe it or not, it's also my own personal bestseller. I've written two other books that are not Commodore related, they're not selling a dime. Five years in publishing, I'm still getting a royalties check every quarter from the publisher. After five years, gentlemen, give it up for Commodore, please. Give it up for Commodore. Looking good for Commodore, guys. We've got to look. I mean, you ought to turn around and take just take a look around this room and see all these wonderful, wonderful machines that people are saying are absolute outdated. Get a real computer. Nah. Forget it. We got we got what it takes, gentlemen. Oh yeah, and gentlemen, we do. So that's basically it. Um, and, uh, the book. Let me turn out. I am not. The, the hardcover costs twenty bucks, guys. That's to me. Even for me, that's too much. And that's my price. So I ordered six soft cover editions of this book. I can sell them for ten. Ten dollars. And that'll give me about mm, twenty cents profit. Wow. I can go turn around and buy myself a drink at the quick trip. So I have a lot more to show. But there's one thing I want to mention, and Robert has asked me to say this. Since this book has done so well, what do you gentlemen who have read the book think about a sequel? Yeah. Would you like to turn around and have me sit down and write another one? Yes. Okay, Robert's vote. So Robert wants me to write another one. I will go through all the hassle and pain to write Robert another copy of the book. Well, its working title right now is, is Shift Clear Home, More 8-Bit Thoughts in a Gigabyte World. I think that's what we said, wasn't it, Robert? Something like that. Something like that. So it's just, it's just, another one's on the way. It may take me a couple of years to write it. Most of the text is already written. It just has to be um, manipulated, put in the right place, make sure it flows. Very, very fun to do. 
Uh, I encourage everybody in this room to write at least one book, especially if you've been in the military, because that that's an experience that everybody needs to remember, is your adventures in Commodore, your adventures in the military, your adventures at home. Everybody should write at least one book before you uh, decide to depart from this world and go to the great beyond. Um, lots more to show, but my time is short. I'll probably boot up, boot up here uh, tomorrow. Um, I guess that's it, Robert. You want to just... Uh... Any questions for Leonard? No. <laughs> he says no. Okay, thanks, Leonard. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.